meeting to order, please. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice, justice for all. <clears throat> Uh, let the uh, let the minutes show that Alder Person Donahue uh, is uh, excused from the Finance and Personnel Committee meeting. Uh, I think we know each everybody here, so we can dispense with the introductions. And uh, number two items for discussion and possible action: uh, two point one resolution number seventeen nineteen dash uh, twenty, December second two thousand nineteen, direct referral resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a lease with Lease Servicing Center Incorporated to finance the purchase of garbage and recycling carts necessary for the city to transition to an automated garbage and recycling system and to authorize the appropriate city officials to purchase the garbage and recycling carts funded uh, by the lease. And uh, do we want... Uh, David, from somebody from your department, want to handle the discussion, or if, if, if you so desire, Mr. Okay. Chairman, I guess I, I'll just come up here. It would be a little bit easier versus from over there, since it's a committee meeting. Um, really, this is just some, you know, formalization of the purchasing, how we're going to finance the carts, as well as the purchasing of the carts. We've had um, this discussion has been at several committees already. And uh, I have uh, Thomas from the, the attorney's office who was instrumental in the actual lease document. Um, as part of the 2020 budget, if you recall, uh, we went through a budget process and it was determined that entering into a lease financing arrangement for the cart purchase was the most advantage uh, way of, <clears throat> excuse me, financing the carts. It's, a, it's an expensive endeavor to, to supply 38,000 uh, recycling and garbage carts. It's a $2 million purchase, in a sense. And uh, the, the company that we, that we vetted and chose is the Toter cart that we had, uh, if you recall, maybe at the old county chambers where we had the carts on display when we were going forward with the program and the proposal. <clears throat> the Toter cart is basically the industry standard um, it has a 12-year warranty on it, and uh, it's got a uh, great track record in terms of durability. It's one of the only carts that use a rotational type of molding process where many of the other carts are injected molded. So I guess to further give you a little bit, um, the, the carts are, are competitively bid on a national contract, so we, we're able to piggyback um, on this contract, we've used this, this it's called Sourcewell now, it was formerly the National Joint Powers Alliance. These national contracts were able to leverage the larger uh, national type of contracts and get that competitive pricing uh, at a local level of Sheboygan. So, um, we're, we're rapidly approaching 2020, and the, the trucks that we've purchased are at the manufacturer, the chassis, and now they're being assembled um, with the actual packing mechanism in the arm. So we're, we're, we're getting close, and before, before you know it, May will be here. So I guess I'm happy to answer any detailed questions, or if you have something more detailed in terms of leasing and, and contractual language, if you don't mind, I defer to the assistant city attorney. Ryan. Yeah, I'm working it. Thanks, David. Um, again, I, I have a few questions, so feel free to just kind of shoot off them wherever. Um, I, I guess I, I, I know we briefly talked about sizes of carts. There was two different sizes, and I know a lot of um, different constituents that I've talked with, um, you know, talked about, oh, you know, where am I going to put this? Where, you know, are these sizes too big? Can I get a smaller one? Do you, can you just kind of talk us a little bit more about that too? And then I'm also curious about, 
the how we're going to distribute these cards, um, and then if there's any costs associated with you know distributing those and getting those to to our constituents, and you know if through this process, if have there's if there's ever been different difficulties of you know how people request you know their cart numbers and, and just kind of what your office and DPW, if you guys have been getting any feedback and concerns to you guys and any topics like that would be awesome. Very good. Uh, first of all, there is no additional cost. The cost that is part of the purchase includes setup and delivery, okay, as so well as an inventory. They do that, or do we do? They that? do that. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so they, they they have a company they contract with that will come. They come in loads, roll them out, and they'll be inventoried in terms of the serial number per address. So we'll have a good tracking mechanism uh, moving forward. In terms of the size, it was determined that for standardization, go with the one size, the 95 gallon size. Listening to the cart manufacturers, what they've said is uh, when you start offering different sizes, the trend is people, they, they think, oh, I don't, it's too big. I don't want this big, big uh, garbage can. I don't have room for it. And what happens is you'll have more requests to go up size in terms of they want to go to the larger because they find, oh, it fills up pretty quick. So what we've learned from the cart manufacturer is go with the one size in the beginning and after about a three to six month trial period, if it becomes a burden or if they find that it's just not doable, we could entertain moving to, to the smaller 65 gallon size. They find that the request to go smaller is much less than the opposite direction of going from smaller to larger. That's what they, that's the trend. We're listening to the experts. They're the ones that yeah. deliver these and that's been their experience from the industry. So um, in terms of footprint though, the footprint of a 65 gallon versus a 95 basically takes up the same floor space. It's just when it, when it goes to the height level as well as a little width, it's a little bit wider at the top and a little bit taller. But the bottom where it sits on the floor is virtually the same from a 95 to a 65. So the, the, the thought process is, oh, it's just too big, I won't have room. In, in reality, they're virtually the same. Yeah. Okay, Ryan? Yeah, thanks, David. Marcus? <clears throat> Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, <clears throat> I have some questions on uh, why you chose to lease these versus an outright purchase versus uh, some other types of financing. Could you explain how that went and why we went this route? I will give it my best and then I may have to defer to maybe Thomas as well as the city administrator as well as our, our finance director here this evening. But when we looked at it, it, it $2 million is a lot of money. So it's something, it, 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 we've, we've used some cash in, uh, for purchase of the vehicles. For instance, we had cash in the motor vehicle fund and we supplemented it with some borrowed funds. One of the issues with terms of bonding for the carts was, um, you know, it, it, again, it would go against our other borrowing for road projects and infrastructure projects. So we didn't want to take away from the capacity, in other words, for that type of uh, priority within our capital improvements. Leasing is kind of a form of bonding or a fi financing, so it does add to the debt. But in, in this case, given that uh, there's a 12-year guarantee and the lease is for 10 years, it, it helped give us a, a, a steady cash flow. And if you recall, we generated a revenue of a $4 per month per resident fee that we can attribute directly towards the recycling carts. So that lease payment it helps for, budgetary, for the budget in terms of tracking, here's this lease, here's the revenue that we're receiving. So cash flow wise, it works really to our advantage as well. Thank you. Betty, you had a question? I did not. Oh, you're, you're, you oh, came up. You. Okay, Jim. Thank you. Uh, uh, David, I think that the $2 million figure that we've come up with here actually is a little bit less than we actually the initial estimate, isn't it? It is, and we also, within the two million, we also, if you recall, we received about a 273,000, uh, or 76,000, roughly 270, we'll just round it off to 270,000 uh, recycling grant 
that will help offset this purchase as well. So that's gonna be part of our initial down payment is within the lease. Another question is, uh, I'm reading over the document, I believe it said that after 10 years, we can uh, purchase the, if we wish, we can purchase the carts for, was it $37,000 or something like that? Uh, or did I misread that? Uh, I'm gonna refer to the Assistant City Attorney, Thomas. Okay. So one of the one of the unique features about this lease, um, and it's it's pretty typical of a capital lease like this, where the expectation is at the end of the at the end of the the time period, for one dollar total, we will end up outright owning all of the the carts. So a lot of times when you think about a lease, you think about like a car lease where you're paying for the value of that car for 36 months. Here. The, the lease schedule is based on the full cost of those of those carts and then the 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 rest of the the title transfers at the end of the 10 years for just one dollar and then to follow up on that then uh, at the end if we buy if we buy those those carts and they still got a couple of years left on the warranty but eventually that we're going to have to replace them I guess owning those things and we want to transition to new ones let's say after the 12 year warranty, what on earth are we going to do with the thirty-seven thousand carts uh, before you know? And then we're going to then we're going to get the new ones. Uh, I, I, Jason, do you want to talk about cart lifespan? Yeah. Jason, Jason, we'll, we'll explain a little bit more about the lifespan. So the lifespan will be longer. Uh, typically, they're seeing up to twenty years. So best practices is you start after the warranty and start replacing a small percentage of 10% and then go through. Um, there's a much larger municipality that it kept deferring that and deferring that in the state and now they have carts that are 25 and 30 year age and they're gonna have to replace them all at once. So if we can digital, do after 15 years, the 12 or 15, start replacing them in smaller amounts and then um, do that over the life cycle. Well, I'll be, I, won't have, I won't need a new car till I'm about at least 92 years old. So I won't worry so about you, it now, Jason. Let's hope I make it that long. It'll be good. I believe <laughs> Toter carts in Detroit have been averaging over 20 years. So. Ryan? Um, I, I, I know we briefly talked about replacing parts. I mean, sometimes wheels come off, the lids right. might fall off. Do we, when we're purchasing these, do we get like a, I don't know, like a bulk set of just replacement parts or... Uh, the, yeah, I'll, have, I'll have carts, and what I can do, the body is 12 years, the lid and the wheels are 10 years, so you can replace them. I stock the broken ones, and then when I get enough, I <clears throat> send them back, and then they'll okay. send, me, send me the new ones. Cool. Thanks. Marcus? Thank you. Uh, this is a question for Thomas. Could you uh, clarify, was that a dollar for 37,000 carts or a dollar per cart? One dollar total. For 37? For all of the carts, and I think it's, it's 37,000 carts total. It's about, it's roughly about 37. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Jim? I have a, a point of order that I want to ask uh, the city attorney. Being that we're meeting as two, as two committees, Attorney Adams, does each committee have to make their own motion, or do we make one motion and we all vote on it? Oh, sorry. Each committee would make its motion, although if one committee chose to simply defer making a motion for the other, that would mean one less document to deal with. But I think Meredith is prepared to deal with both. Okay, thank you. Because at council, you're going to have to accept one and file the other. Okay. My recommendation is that both committees would, ex would make a motion to accept. So it's on record, and then in council, one committee could accept it, and then the other committee could accept to file, if that would work. Right. Or we could have fun and accept one and deny another one. Oh, know. there you go. <laughs> Chuck's like, don't do that. <laughs> That's why we don't recommend joint meetings. <laughs> I'm just kidding. OK, Jim, any, uh, any other questions? I have nothing else. OK. Did you want to? I would entertain a motion from a uh, finance committee member. I make a motion second. to approve. Marcus, you second it? Yep. We have a motion and a second from the Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, 
and that's to approve the, to approve. the lease. Uh, all in favor from the uh, Finance and Personnel Committee? Aye. Aye. Uh, Vice Chair votes aye, motion carries. Okay, for Public Works, I'm looking. Uh, I, I move to accept the recommendation. Second. For Public Works. For Public Works. Thank you for that motion acceptance. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any questions? Seeing none, all from Public Works. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. All right, so we have accepted on both finance and personnel and pu for public works. I move that public works adjourn. I move that finance and personnel committee adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're both <laughs> adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>